Risk. The classic strategy game of global domination. You might have played the original version, but we have four modes to go through today. Here are the stats. Let's get into it. You get a game board with a map of the world. It's split into 42 territories across six continents, nine yellow territories in North America, seven blue territories in Europe, four orange territories in South America, six red territories in Africa, 12 green territories in Asia, and four purple territories in Australia. Five armies, split into 40 infantry, 12 cavalry, and eight artillery, all contained in war crates in five colors, blue, green, purple, red, and yellow. A deck of 56 risk cards in a card box, comprised of 42 territory cards with infantry, cavalry, and artillery designs, two wild cards with all three troops on them, and 12 secret mission cards. Finally, five six-sided dice, two blue ones for defense, and three red ones for attacks. In Secret Mission Risk, you must be the first player to secretly complete the secret secret mission on your secret secret mission card to not so secretly become the winner. Come on, you know this one. It's time to set up. Each player selects the color of their army and starts with a number of infantry dependent on their player count. 35 for three players, 30 for four, or 25 for five. We'll get into how many you need for two players later. Now, elect one player to be the general. They take the secret mission cards and remove any that refer to an army that no one's playing. They then shuffle the secret mission cards and deal one, secretly, to each player. The remaining cards go into the box without being seen. Then, the general removes the wild cards from the deck, shuffles the rest of the cards, and deals them out evenly to all of the players, starting with the player to their left. Each player takes one infantry on each territory they were dealt. Then. Each player takes turns placing one additional infantry in any of their territories. There's no limit to how many troops can be on one territory, but if you're running out of room, you can trade five infantry for one cavalry, 10 infantry for one artillery, or two cavalry for one artillery. Keep going until all of the starting troops have been placed. The general collects all of the territory and wild cards, then shuffles them together into a face-down deck. Place the deck next to the board. It's time to start the war. Each player rolls one die. Whoever gets the highest roll goes first. Each turn is comprised of these three steps. First, they receive new troops to place on their territories. Then, they may attack enemy territories, if they want to. Finally, they may maneuver troops from one of their territories to a connected territory they occupy. They pass the dice to the player to their left, who then does the same three steps. Then the player to their left, then the player to their left, then the player to their left then the player to their left, then the player to their left, then the player to their left. Once a player completes their secret mission, whether it is their turn or not, they immediately reveal their secret mission card to end the game and be declared the victor. Here's how you receive troops. The troops you get can be placed on any territory you currently occupy, with one exception that I'll get into in just a bit. First, count up the number of territories you currently occupy and divide the number by three, rounding down. You'll always receive at least three troops, even if you occupy less than nine territories. Now, add bonus troops for any continents that you occupy every territory of. Finally, turn in sets of three territory cards to get additional troops. The sets can either have one of each troop, three of the same troop, or two of the same troop and one wild card. Every set that's turned in raises in value. That's every set anyone plays, not just the ones you turn in. The number of troops you get is written along the edge of the board, so just tuck the sets underneath to keep track. If you get to the end, just add another five troops for each set after the end of the board. If any of the cards you're turning in are territories that you occupy, put an additional two troops on those territories. Now, the real juice of the game, attacking. You don't have to attack on your turn, but you may attack as many times as you like. As long as it meets these prerequisites, you must occupy a territory that shares a border or sea line with the territory you're attacking. You can only attack one territory at a time, from one territory. You must have at least two troops in the territory you're attacking from, since one has to stay behind to protect the territory. If all of that's true, move one to three troops from the attacking territory to the attacked territory. The defender chooses one to two troops in the attacked territory to defend. Unlike the attacker, 
they may use all of the troops in their territory. The attacker takes one red die for each of their troops. The defender takes one blue die for each of theirs, and they both roll simultaneously. Compare the highest die each rolled to each other, and the next highest to each other. Whoever rolled lowest in each pair loses one troop. The defender wins a tie. If there are any defending troops left in the attacked territory, the attackers must return to their territory. If all of the defending troops are defeated, the attacking troops remain there, and more troops may be moved in from the attacking territory. Attack again, if you want, whether you want or not, as long as the conditions are met. If you capture at least one territory this turn, draw one territory card from the deck. Finally, you can maneuver as many troops as you want, from one of your territories to another of yours, provided that you don't pass through any enemy territories and you leave at least one troop in the origin territory. If you eliminate a player at any point by removing their last troop from the board, you win all of their territory cards. If this gives you more than six territory cards, you must immediately trade in sets until you have four or less cards. If you want to play the classic risk of your childhood, just leave the secret mission cards in the box. After you pass out the troops and determine turn order, all of the players take turns placing a single infantry on any empty territory until they're all occupied. Then, continue as normal. Whoever placed the first troop takes the first turn. Now, the objective is to eliminate all of your opponents and conquer the world. Two-player risk works like classic risk, but includes the use of a third neutral army. Each army starts with 40 troops. Shuffle and deal out the territory cards to determine starting territories, like in Secret Mission Risk. Then, both players take turns placing the rest of their starting infantry. Once all of those are placed, they take turns placing the rest of the neutral army's starting infantry. If you attack a neutral territory, your opponent rolls for the defender. The neutral army doesn't attack and doesn't receive new troops. Play until one of the non-neutral armies is eliminated. This plays like classic Risk, just a lot faster. After you set up, before you make the territory deck, have all of the players choose one of their territories to be their headquarters. They then find that territory's card and place it face down in front of them. Once all headquarters are chosen, everyone reveals their card simultaneously. Now, while playing as usual, when a headquarter territory is captured, the capturer takes the card from that player. The first player to capture all of the headquarters while occupying theirs wins. If you want it to go even faster, play to two headquarters in a four-player game and three headquarters in a five-player game. So that's risk. That should cover everything. But if you still have any questions, put them in the comments below. If you liked this, please take the time to click like, subscribe, and the notification bell. It would really mean a lot to me. Thanks for watching, everybody.